Execration have done a whole lot of tying in their group stage so far, especially against some respectable opponents, both Hellraisers and especially Virtus Pro. They've won the first game against Invictus Gaming in this two-game series, as they did against Hellraisers and uh, VP. But can they finally break the tiebreaker and actually get themselves a series win? Especially against IG, that would be very impressive for Execration and a huge win for their standing in the group stage. I mean, if you can take a game off of teams like IG during the group stage, you're going to be feeling a lot more confident, I think, moving on. And this is something that's really important, I feel, for some teams who I think might be more emotionally driven than others. Mm -hmm. Some people are really good at being able to sit back and reflect on a series and say, okay, this is what we did wrong. This is what we need to do the next time. But some people, I think, have a tendency to maybe get a little bit too down on themselves when they lose too much. So for a team like Execration, I feel like they may fit that criteria. So if they can continue to take games off of people and, and continue to play their style and make it work, then I'm really looking forward to see what they bring in the future. And IG are probably one of the teams that a lot of people had in the top eight. Like, th these, this team has been good all year, pretty much. Yeah, they, they definitely peaked out the, the highest at DAC, managed to yep. win that prestigious tournament, and have continued to maintain a relatively high standing in the echelons of Chinese Dota. Our first standing here is going to be Sand King, first pick. Our Spirit Disruptor is the combo from IG. And Execration respond with their Venomancer. First time we've seen it today, at least you and I personally. Yep. It was banned a couple of the games before we saw in the first phase. I'm not sure what capacity this is Venom is going to be just yet. Usually we see it as core. Yep. Don't see a whole lot of support Venos nowadays, at least in the competitive scene. It's really good at just kind of existing and that sounds weird right it's like okay what do you mean by that <laughs> but he just sits in a lane you don't really want to go to his lane because it's a venomancer and there's tons of plague wards everywhere and you run the risk of getting hit by poison nova so he just builds all these items that make him tanky increases the the potency of his ultimate and if you don't deal with him at some point you're just going to start losing tier ones you know i think eg is probably one of the best examples of teams that use this hero very well and normally what they'll do is they'll have the hero farm until like level seven mm -hmm. and they'll tp him to another lane and just sit there until the tower is dead yeah and you either go there to deal with it or you lose the tower and even if you go there and deal with it so you kill the venomancer that oftentimes just results in either counterplay say he gets out the poison nova and then his team is able to clean you up uh after all that damage of time or it just creates a whole lot of space as you're committing multiple heroes to make sure Again, you get the chain stuns involved to be able to finish off the Venomancer before he gets the Poison Nova. So your allies get a lot of space to be able to do some pushing. Maybe they go and kill the enemy core or something like that. So based off of what Execration have run in the past, should be a safe lane Venomancer. But again, picked up this early. There is a lot of variance. Venomancer can also play mid, though a lot less likely. And there have been support Venomancers in the past. Uh, meanwhile, what about IG? They picked up the Earth Spirit. That's a Boboka classic, sure, but uh, you really feeling that four position lately? Seems like one of the, the more forgotten supports. Yeah, he hasn't really seen a whole lot of play, but I think it's a comfort zone thing. There, there are teams that have the player who's so good at it that it just doesn't matter how many times it gets nerfed, I yeah. guess. Like, Jerax on Team Liquid would be a, another example. Dogfights. Dogfights, yeah, he's also fantastic. There's there's a handful of players out there who I think can still make it function. And a lot of the times when you're playing against, I guess now, a hero like Venno, it's nice to have something to answer back in regards to just AoE damage. If you get a good Magnetize off during a team fight, it's not maybe as potent as a core Venno would be, but it's something. Yeah. And it's also... A unique hero in that he can pressure a lane from just not even being visible during daytime and like sb is one of the only other heroes who can do that you know he makes you feel scared and right. you kind of want that when you're trying to win your mid lane our bands took away lycan and uh faceless void on the side of execration uh meanwhile ig actually banned away the life stealer and the omni knight pretty important they ban away the omni Especially with the Venomancer and the performance that we saw from Execration Here we in go. that last game. Darkseer against a Venomancer. Perfect. This is probably the best offlaner in the game against Venom, I feel. 
You can surge yourself when you hit Gale. You naturally build into teamfight items like mech, eventually Guardian Greaves, your pipes, yep. stuff like that. It enables the Earth Spirit, so if he ever comes to your lane, you can go for direct lane pressure if you feel like it's possible. You can also Ion Shell and the Earth Spirit can TP mid, for example, too, and you, you just can get that extra kind of oomph you need to get a kill on a core hero. So I think it's great. It's a very, very solid pick. Great vacuum combination into either a Boulder Smash or a Disruptor Ultimate. Lots of combo potential, really solid lanes, pretty decent roam coming in from IG. Basically a, a good draft, I guess, is what I'm what I'm getting at. You know, these teams at TI are pretty good at picking heroes. Decent. But what about the Sven? That kind of changes things, right? We now have a, a safe lane Sven, most likely, against the Dark Seer. I'm wondering if they'll end up just doing like a 2-1-2 two, two and put the Veno bottom with an, like maybe the Sand King is there or some other hero they want to pick a yeah. little bit later. Yeah, because then it's that. it's against Disruptor and something else. And Disruptor is not good in 2v2s. He's just really not. It's so easy nope. to pressure him. Yeah, certainly not. Ember Spirit picked up, uh, who does have a high amount of defense against that damage over time. Magic damage over time, I should say, with the uh, Flame Guard. Oracle instantly picked up in a response, though. Both a good saving hero. Uh, say you're trapped inside that static storm, need a little help out. Oracle can save you from the magic damage, or maybe just saves you entirely with a false promise. And can also dispel both the Ion Shell in the landing phase, as well as now the Flame Guard. Actually, now that I think about it, does Fortune's end dispel Thunderstrike? Yeah, it does. So then you lose the vision and you can't glimpse. Yeah. It's actually pretty good. I don't know how like much utilization you're going to get out of that, but <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. it's something to think about, right? It's Yeah, certainly. He's he's fantastic against their whole team. Fate's Edict. This might be the most valuable Fate's Edict game I've ever seen. It really could. In a defensive capacity. Oh, I got Searing Chains. Fate's Edict. Oh, you Triple Remnant me. Fate's Edict. There's Iron Shell, Static, Summer Magnetize. Fate's Edict. It just stops all their damage. Oracle, not so long ago, was considered one of those garbage supports, but even back then, I would have said Oracle's great pick, pick up there. But Oracle's yeah. been seeing a lot more play, seeing a lot more value. I, I can't really say exactly what the reason is, what really changed about the, the meta that allowed Oracle to be able to fit in once again, but it seems like uh, they're, he's not the only defensive support that is seeing a little bit of love. Yeah, I kind of like it. I, it, I'm in the same thought process as you. A, a little while ago, I would say this here was probably like bottom five, just mm. like complete poo poo. But nowadays, uh, he's he's seen a, against bat riders and stuff like that. Makes sense because you get the strongest spell. You know, you can save people, so you see him in those situations. But I think more importantly, you see him as like direct lane counters to off lanes that have a tendency to be spell based. So like Dark Seer, you can dispel like all of his his laning potential with just one spell. Yeah. And then he's just completely useless. And it's always been that way. Like the this matchup I think is something that they want because of the fact that they can now do a two one two with those heroes. If they want to put the Venom mid or the silencer mid, that's both of them are okay to do that. And then you just guarantee that even though it's only two heroes against a Dark Seer where a Dark Seer may normally feel pretty good in that lane, against Oracle you're gonna feel like, Oh god, I can't you know, yeah. I can't do anything. I'm down with this. I'm down with the 2-1-2. Two, two. I like Silencer mid, Venomancer, Sand King, dual offlane. Uh, they're going to be facing against a troll, though. Troll's really good at being able to deal with Venomancer um, in the laning phase because you go to range form, deal with wards right. pretty well. God, also, look at how cool that Sven set is. Yeah, that is pretty sick. That is probably my favorite set in the game, like just of all heroes. It just looks darn good. I don't even know what my favorite set would be. Well, I, I pretty much, I think of it this way. Like when I see a set, I like the whole, I don't know how to explain it. I just like stuff that has good shape to it. And when I look at the Sven set, I just think like aesthetically, the shapes are pleasing to my eye. I like spikes. This has been hat talk. <laughs> this has been hat talk. Please make sure you know, I won't say that. Um, but no, I, I'm always uh, I'm always a fan of some of the the stuff that comes out of the TI chests. Like most of the year, I don't really put much into the cosmetic thing because you gotta wait for the big tournaments till you see the dang yeah, sets, yeah, yeah. and then you just spend all your money at the same time, <laughs> and then you look at your wallet and you're like, oh god, what have I done? Have you uh, have you done that thing where you can go and look and see how much money on Dota 2? Uh, I don't know how to do that actually. 
I will have to show you at some point. Maybe if we have like a I really don't know if pause. I want to see that number. Yeah, it feels <laughs> a little bad. I'll tell you that. You look at it and you're like, well, you obviously spend it incrementally. Yeah. And I've been playing Dota since like before cosmetics were even in the game. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure I've spent a, a dollar or two here and there. I can tell you I am about to reach that $1,000. That is impressive. Yeah. The bulk of the money I think I spend is always on compendiums. I don't feel like I spend that much, but it's just been so much time. Yeah, yeah. Spend that's that's what it is. And before, I had this weird problem where I was in Sweden for a number of years, as you know, uh -huh. and I was trying to buy stuff, but I couldn't because the Steam thing was saying that my account was based in the U.S., but I was actually in Sweden. Uh, yeah. So for a really long time, I couldn't even buy my own compendium for like uh, two years. Yeah, I had that problem when I moved to Germany as well. Yeah, so I had to have people buy compendiums for me, <laughs> and I felt really bad because I was like, I can't even buy the compendium for the game that I'm going to the tournament to cast for. The truth is, Draskal had no problems whatsoever. He just enjoyed using other people's money. God, you just make me sound like such a bad person. GG. I'm making you sound crafty. Crafty? Yeah. I wish I was crafty. I'm really not a smart person, Cat. <laughs> and that's why you're my co-caster. There it is. Uh, I think they saw that roll in. I, I don't... How much can you... You can see, like, the... the like, you can see something, right? Even though he smoked, you have vision of that area. Uh, I think you can see the stone drop, but yeah, you can't. The stone drop. You can't see the the actual roll. I think. Yeah. Some abilities have that animation or whatever that just doesn't care if you're smoked or not. That sometimes you can see it. Yeah. But I don't think that the roll itself is what is visible in this case. So I'm not sure if they actually spotted that ward, the Sand King, or not. I don't think so. If they if they saw it, someone would have. Probably bought a century already if they had the money. I guess everyone. Nobody uh, has the money. Yeah, I was gonna say everyone execration actually spent their money. Rage Potato pokes his head out. Let's see what's up at this top lane. Three. There's three heroes here, so everyone's just gonna chill out on their own bounty runes. A nice peaceful start. To what is going to be, I'm sure, quite a tumultuous game number two between IG and Execration. With all this weird team fight, you know, like you've got Ember Spirit versus Venomancer, you've got like uh, Silencer on one side, but you also have this combination of the Disruptor and um, Darkseer combo, you know, the, the vacuum in, the Static Storm kinetic field combination. There's a lot of opportunity for big plays on both sides. Execration are actually going to find an early kill here onto Q. Q did not expect this dual lane. He just gets galed up, burrow struck, and there goes your first blood. Well, I'm happy to say this is how they landed. I felt like, on paper, this is probably the strongest pairings they could do. Mm -hmm. And I'm really curious to see how much XXS can get out of his lane. Could be a little bit of a struggle. Not even bothering to dispel the level 1 Ion Shell. Probably just doesn't care about how much damage it deals. Nothing feels better than getting harassed. Oh, there we go. Get in the Sentry and eating with a shared Tango. That first Observer Ward. Oh, yeah. Oh, he gets baby. it in the mid lane. That's the dream. Yeah. Or, sorry, James, I guess, got yeah, it. James. He's putting the, really putting the number here on OP with the Glaze of Wisdom. As he gets more levels, it'll get worse and worse. Roll's going to miss. Yeah, it's going to miss. James does have the backup of Lumic. In fact, they're getting a lot of damage onto Boba Guy. He might just be able to get a couple of right clicks in to finish him off. One. Where's the Glaze of Wisdom, homie? Glaze of Wisdom. All right. Healing salves. Definitely gonna allow Boba Cut to live, especially since James doesn't want to miss out on this gigantic creep wave that is underneath the tower. Lumic will eventually catch up to Boba Cut. Boba Cut is gonna go for the roll on out, will be okay. Meanwhile, top lane, uh, Rage Potato actually did get caught. I'm not sure how exactly he gets caught. Looks like just the range slow from burning. Is it enough for them to be able to run down the Venomancer? Because, see, you only have Thunderstrike on Disruptor. He did use the Gale as well, so it's not even. He must have been really far out of position in order, I think, to die like that. Does not make much sense to me. But either way, it's uh, one of those games where I feel like IG are going to hit their stride really fast. You want to talk about something that's terrifying? Ion Shelled Ember Spirit. Ooh, the lawnmower. Yeah, that he will just light you up. There is not a whole heck of a lot some of these heroes can do about it. Like Veno, he'll probably die. Uh, if there's no Fates Edict around, pretty much anyone's just going to gonna get turned into a pile of ashes real real quick and it looks like xxs even despite you know having this really tough lane he's managed to get level three before the three minute mark he can make his way back down there as well 
top again, Raging Potato. Q is going to try and get close enough for the kinetic field, but he doesn't manage to uh, throw out the Venomous Gale real timed by uh, Raging Potato. Throws the ward down, does see the heroes, gets the slow. It's perfect to protect himself. Are you much of a, a science lad, Draskal? Much of a what fan? A science lad. Oh, a science lad. Yeah. Mm. I don't do much of my own science anymore. I kind of let people do it and then figure mm. figure out their science afterwards. I was gonna ask you what what exactly kind of energy or whatever. What what the hell is ion shell? What is ion? I don't actually know. Me neither. <laughs> I have no idea what it's made out of. I'm gonna say it's made out of karate because that's what he does. Karate. Hand to face combat. Nice. It makes sense, right? Yeah. Everyone's got like a chi. I mean, that fits with the Ember Spirit. He puts the power of karate on the Ember Spirit and he's all fire and karate. Bash. That's what bash. he's all about. No, no bash. bash. It, uh, he... Yeah, it's... The Darkseer pick for me, I personally love that hero because it always feels like you can do something on Darkseer. Some offlaners, you have like this poopy lane and you're like, ugh. This is, I'm just like lane counter or something. You, you're playing against some, you know how it is, Cap. Somebody picks Juggernaut or Lifestealer and they think they're like the best player in the world because they have magic immune spells. And you're just sitting there going, I can't actually do anything. No matter how badly this guy plays a lane, I just cannot do anything. Yeah. But Darkseer, you can always do something. Yeah, even in this situation, which is probably one of the poopiest lanes, as you said, for a Darkseer to deal with. You've got a Oracle, can just Fortunes end off your uh, Ion Shell and you put a double down. You just use one spell to kill both. So instead, XSS is spending a lot of his time jungling and is already level 4 and encroaching upon level 5 even. Yeah, this is definitely what you want. As soon as OP hits that level 6 and 7, you get an Ion Shell, you TP to a lane, you kill anyone. Armor is not going to help. Even the Sven is susceptible, I think, to that kind of counter gank. He just gave it a Boba Cut. These are the combos I love with Ion Shell. Darks here gives it to a Spirit Breaker or an Earth Spirit, and they set up for a kill in another lane. But Bobica has been really seeing his opportunity with his buddy OP not being level 6 and not being in lane either. Kind of missed their timing window there. I think it's a bit more difficult for Earth Spirit nowadays to really utilize the shell that much. XXS. Oh boy. That would have been quite the windfall if Execration just ran over with the smoke and found a 100 HP Darkseer, but... They were looking for him. Instead, they're gonna smoke over into mid lane. Here comes the roll-in. Perfect timing for these two supports to show up. They could just get on top of them. Nice! Fortune's Dead burning them off. Flame Guard, bye bye Takes out the Amber Spirits. What a setup from Execration. What a bait by James. I don't even... That's one of those situations where you kind of look at the, the map and you're like, oh, my supports are here. And it just happens perfectly. Like the Ember Spirit hits six and he's like, I'm going in, boys. And then just instantly gets punished. Speaking of getting punished a little bit. Steal that bounty room, Lumic. Steal it away. Nando is now level five. He's feeling pretty tanky, so he can kind of deal with the Ion Shell while the Oracle is away. The Dark Seer hopes to be able to play Dota. Bulbica comes in with an Invis rune, has an Ion Shell on him. He's going to help clear through this stack. And if any supports come around, or maybe Nando himself show up, he may have an opportunity for initiation. How fast does he notice? That's the question. Yeah, I'm feeling like he kind of maybe already noticed with the stack taking some damage, but Bulbica takes a lot of cleave damage there. They're just trying to run him down. Gets the Fortune's End, doesn't actually burn out Bulbica. But, uh... That, that was a win for Execration, right? Nando took most of that CS. Yeah. yeah, he went in there and just made sure. You know, even popping God Strength, I think, at this point is worth it. Because XXS hasn't really been showing in lane that much anyway. So if you're not, like, running all the way over to where his jungle camps are, you're not going to need it to kill him. A little bit of heal on agility treads for the ultimate efficiency. OP challenging James here in the mid lane. Lumic is here to be able to get the stun. Of course, he already has it now. So, away to the neutrals he goes. I think it'll be a little while longer before we really start to see OP making a, a ton of moves around the map. The Silencer versus Ember matchup is not one we see a ton, but Silencer is just always annoying in the mid lane. You know, max level curse, you have an orb, orb walking is crazy strong in lane. 
stun on the top lane. They're going to go for Q here. Looks like a pretty easy kill until wham, bam. OP shows up with an ion shell on top of him. Lubick's going to die. And Raging Potato aborts mission. 2-2. Two to two. Execration. Slight lead in this landing phase so far. And yeah, that was just ion shell. Didn't even have mana to cast a flame guard. That in conjunction with the veil that's going to be coming up on OP. That is going to be a very... Very difficult Ember Spirit to fight into. Damn, RR. He straight up picks up the double damage rune. I guess he thought maybe the Ember Spirit was going to be rotating down through the river. Just wanted to make sure that no matter what, Ember Spirit doesn't get to fill his bottle with that. Uh... can definitely understand the logic. As a support, sometimes when you don't have like all the information to feel comfortable, you don't really want to sit in the river for that long when you don't have vision. It's just like, oh god, I want to get out of here. Nothing feels worse than like trying to protect that rune, and then all of a sudden an enemy core shows up, takes it, and kills you with it. Yeah. I hate to say how many times that's happened to me. I'm like, hey, I'm saving the rune for you. Oh god. It's happening. <laughs> Ooh, this is an interesting smoke. Ice Creation are going to move James out of the mid lane here with a smoke next to Lumic. Now, they're going to head to bottom. Are they going to try and invade that offlane jungle where they know the Darkseer has been farming a lot? They're going to go for the high ground? Or are they just going to try and kill this Earth Spirit and turn it into a tower push? Looks like it is going to be the latter. The Sven starts pushing in, and Execration is making James make the wraparound here. He's going to reveal himself. A Volka plays a hard right-hand sign and is able to get away from that initiation, so it's going to just have to be Execration taking this tower. That's yeah, still a nice movement, getting something. Just recognizing that he had the Mask of Madness up, and it would have been pretty easy to take the tower if they get even one pick. At this point, I don't know if IG even want to try to defend this yet. They're just going to back off. Too hard to defend. You need an Ember TP, I think, or something to be able to justify fighting that. Meanwhile, the full disgusting Venomancer is out in force. He's got his level 4 Plague Wards, level 2 Poison Sting as well. Plus, this is a, an interesting little turn. I haven't seen this before. Straight Medallion for the Venomancer. It's pretty I, cool. I guess it's good because their team inherently is not really that great at killing Roshan. Yep. The Medallion helps with that a little bit. And in laning phase, if you got the, these wards out, it's a lot of physical damage, actually. Yep. RR is going to be caught here. Now, he can save himself a little bit of time here with a Fate Edict. Uh, actually puts it on OP to stop the right-click attack because he burned out all the magic damage. That was kind of cool. No matter what, he was going to die there. But he played it probably the best way you could. Burn out the Flame Guard and use the Disarm on OP afterwards. Yeah, I like it. The, I mean, the, the Oracle is showing how useful he can be. Already once dispelling the Flame Guard on OP mid to get the kill when they were doing the counter gank, mm -hmm. helping out James, and then once again demonstrating. That's like if you think about how much IG are based around the Ion Shell slash Flame Guard combo for damage output. That hero provides insane amounts of just protection against that. You dispel, it hits both of them. It doesn't dispel just the Ion Shell or just the Flame Guard. It takes both of them off. Here we go for James here, managed to land the roll in, follow up with a lot of magic damage, even throwing down the Static Storm just to make sure James does die. No opportunity for a global silence. Meanwhile, somewhere in the Roshan pits, burning. 1v1's a giant rock monster. I like this. I like the, the build that he went and going for like the Roshan sneak. It's not something that you think about a whole bunch, because when you see someone sitting in a lane, you think, oh, well, maybe the core just transitioned into the jungle because he wants other heroes to get EXP. Yeah. But it's like a, a one-two punch, because not only is that still happening, he's getting an objective. Surprise! And it's really hard to anticipate Roshans like that yeah, if you're sure. not like an Ursa or something. Execration. I mean, it's not the biggest loss in the world. It's actually kind of the economical benefit from IG that hurts a little bit more than perhaps the Aegis. We'll see what they really do with an Aegis on Troll, because uh, a lot of times that hero isn't really forcing a whole lot of engagements in this five minute window, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't know what he's going to do with it. I think he's just going to yeah. farm, but I think it's more about just getting something done on the map while your team is still being efficient elsewhere, like soaking EXP and you know, getting to those level sixes. And it denies Roshan away from Execration for 10 minutes, especially yeah. since they, they are going to be reaching their peak here. 
or one of their like early mid game peaks with this Venomancer, where he kind of pressures you constantly. He starts taking away these towers, especially with this uh, this Medallion of Courage. And they could easily take Roshan. Would be a little bit slow, but they could take it with the woods. Yeah, it would. It would definitely be slow. But I like Raging Potato going back for the the full Hood of Defiance, recognizing that the majority of the output of damage on IG is going to be based and magic and not right click until later once burning has some farm and for now just being like i just want to exist it's all he wants to do a scan making rage potato feel a little bit more comfortable with his position as he pushes deeper and deeper into the tower it's actually a wrap around from ig through the south side as they look to take mid tower in exchange for top falling but they want to be able to get a kill with it so the roll in from Bobica comes in he missed the roll but he managed to hit the silence follow up stun with op there it's a pretty easy kill so boom just like that four heroes on top of mid tower even if execration are happy with taking that tier one tower they're gonna be a little bit sad if they lose their mid one that's why they're already tp'ing back and it was actually gonna pop his head out from the trees managed to get a stun onto op the kick and a jump away to the Remnant. They protect their tower, but they don't get any kills. I think it's alright. I mean, they, they took the tier 1 of the safe lane of IG. They defend their own tower. And they're gonna, even though he popped God Strength, like right away it seemed a little bit silly, but he has an Ancient stack, so it's not even as if he's misused the spell. Still gets some value out of popping the ulti there. Even gonna get the Shrine to boot. So, still I think that Execration are kind of hitting all the points that they need to hit and IG I kind of thought that they would be able to accomplish a bit more with their hero combination did Q really not see him he was standing like Lumix. real close yeah Lumix saw Q that's for sure he might have been looking at somewhere else on the map yeah full out pipe coming in very soon for Raging Potato plus having his level 2 poison Nova in due time they haven't really uh, used, utilized the silencer just yet, but with the four staff, I think that's one of the first timings that you feel kind of comfortable going to uh, a team fight with this hero. There's definitely nothing that says execration need to force anything though, because they do have the Sven and he's farming up fantastically, sitting at 8k net worth top of the board. The one, I guess, little bit of concern that I have for the Sven is that he's gone for the, the Blink Mask of Madness Yasha, but he's not anywhere near the, the BKB. Uh -huh. And if you do get Fate's Edict during a fight to protect you, you are dealing zero damage. Yeah. So that's that's one thing, I guess, where it could be a little bit difficult for him. And plus, there's other stuff like Whirling Axes that can blind you. There's a lot of Disable. You're putting a lot of eggs in your initiation basket if you're going this build, or you're just looking to farm more than anything else. That's what he's been doing a lot of so far. Another Ancient Stack being taken by him while Raging Potato plays the uh, Hermit Life here in the top lane. Just imagine Venomancer turning this into just a big swamp. That, that's what he does, man. Yeah. He goes around, makes everything poisonous. No one wants to live there. That's why IG aren't anywhere near the top lane. Now, Rage of Potato actually TP's into the bottom lane. Surprised as IG overwhelm him with just sheer numbers. And uh, they're going to have to cancel that TP from the same They're still going to try and fight, it looks like. With four-man smoke over to the side. They're going to be able to burn up. OP, Global Silence not being used there by James. Holds on to it for now. They do have to deal with an Aegis burning, though. So they're trying to force this fight so heavily. The Global Silence goes down, but the Epicenter doesn't latch. The Global Silence just a little bit tad too late. Now the backing back. Loom is going to get caught. And Nando being dealt with by burning. Jumps on top of him, gets at least one bash. They threw down the False Promise on the Lumic Vault Heroes, and he does get the full heal out. The kick is going to miss, and IG will turn back to that Tier 2. Demolished in Ruins, 2-7 to seven, IG, take a 3k gold lead. I'm really surprised that Execration decided to go for that, even after their Venomancer died without having gotten the ult off. Like, if he ulted three or four people before he died, then yeah, it kind of makes sense, right? Because they're all poison over, they're going to be taking damage. I could justify going in a 4v5 if that many heroes got hit by the ulti, but yeah. he just died before he got to do anything. So then you're just actively taking a 4v5 against a team that has a mech on their Darkseer. They have the Static Storm available. And an Aegis. And, well, they had an Aegis, yeah. yeah. Burning was just, like, in that situation, once the, the fight kind of progressed forward two seconds in, like, you saw Burning just furiously go on the front lines because he's like, you're going to have to go through me to get to my team, and I've got an extra life, so I don't know what you guys think. 
And Nando really just needs the BKB. That's the important part. I mean, sure, popping the False Promise on uh, on the Sand King probably didn't help, but at the same time, we, we talked about it like seconds before the fight broke out, how hard it is for the Sven to hit people if he doesn't have that item in the skin. Boomy got caught. Oh, man, he's so close to his Blink Dagger too, but he's stuck against an Ion Shell with no mana for Burrow Strike, so great call by IG. No BKB, no Blink Dagger, no way for Execration to fight right now. Yeah, IG are messing around this game. In the last, the, the last game that we watched, it felt a little bit weird. Like maybe IG were kind of out of sorts, not playing the fights as well as you would expect. But this time around, they are all business. They most certainly are. I love the 12% evasion on Darkseer in some of these oh, situations, yeah. and this is one of the great ones. Feels so good. I'd say most of the time the cast range just doesn't really feel worth it. Yeah. You really have to have, I think, some sick combinations to go for the cast range. Yeah, if you're getting like the early blink into like some wombo combo, I could see it. Yeah. James chilling out here on the side. It's actually execration to look a little bit out of sorts here. That last initiative, like force in the four versus five is kinda of questionable. Oh, force that blink forward. Q will take the three shot. Uh, but top lane, Rage of Potato is going to be gone on by OP. Forces, I guess, hoping to be able to force rotations or something. Extra Christian is still going to go for this mid lane push, but they do have the heroes here. Global Silence goes down. Nando's actually just trying to run away, but Burning's right on top of him. He gets a little bit lucky. He might actually be able to chase down this hero, but James goes for Bobaka, unable to take that kill. Disarm onto Burning, but he needs RR. Can't really protect himself unless he's forced to use False Promise. There goes the Nova. From Rage of Potato, just clipping XXS, but it might be enough for them to be able to get the kill. Force that forward from James, couple right clicks, gets that one, but now he's going to be slowed down, but boom, come in to get the roll in. Here comes a kick, and that is it. Or oh, maybe not. Q is going to be able to pull back RR. Rage of Potato is actually going back for his support. Don't do the Save a Friend Syndrome. RR is definitely dead, and Rage of Potato might be as well. He gets the Storm Hammer stun from the Sven to be able to help him out, but running so damn fast. Here comes the Epicenter. They need the stun now, and they get it onto Burning just in time. RR is somehow still alive because of the False Promise. Burning not going to be able to let Lumic escape from this one, and neither is Raging Potato. He hides in his side, puts down a ward best he can, but in the end, Execration, again, questionable on the decision-making of when they should team fight. It feels like they they're playing a different lineup. You know, they're playing a lineup that doesn't really want to fight right now until they hit these timings, but they're acting like they can. I feel the same way. Just fighting into the strongest point of IG's draft. Like prior to BKB's, sure, you got the pipe, you got the, the medallion out on the Venomancer, but again, it's, it's not a five versus five that we're watching. It's heroes die, and then more of Execration kind of funnel in. And the fight stretches out, and their heroes, they think that they, they feel strong enough to take these engagements, but it's only going to work if you are together. Yeah. And they, they haven't really had that one fight where everyone is as five, and they get a good blink initiation, and the Poison Nova hits more than one hero. Like, think about that. We haven't seen a Poison Nova hit more than one hero <laughs> in a 21-minute game. Like, yeah. that, that cannot happen, and you still expect to win these fights. It's 4 to 12. Victus Gaming leading a 6k. About the same in experience as well. This uh, Venomancer has gotten a decent amount of farm, but he was the 1v1. It's James who's beginning to fall behind as that mid silencer. Now he's going back for the Hand of Midas because he desperately needs it. A little bit of a catch up, and honestly, it seems like there's no other way for Excavation to win this game uh, early. It's definitely going late, in my mind, if Execration pull out a win. I think there's still an opportunity or two for them to take a mid-game fight, as long as they just coordinate it properly. Yeah. All the fights that I've seen so far this game have been very chaotic. It's always them coming in one at a time, and IG are just the, the more structured unit. They always are together, they're always getting the proper initiation, saving the people who need to be saved. Tower's gonna get denied here by Raging Potato, but... Another smoke comes in from IG. They had this idea to wrap deep in through the jungle, even going into the offlane jungle area, but they were delayed. Here a little bit go. of detour trying to grab Nando, but he had a pretty quick read of the situation. So many heroes off map. He did not feel comfortable pushing that, so showed himself, blinked to the, to the trees, TP'd out. Those are the kind of really good TP out plays, you know, where you can, you're doing something that's fast enough that you know it's going to force 
attention from the enemy team, but you're also fast enough to be able to get out when they do make that rotation. Oh, this is really good for Execration. Yeah, Fresh BKB. Haste Rune up with a Poison Nova. They're going to be able to hit multiple heroes there with a the BKB onto Nando. He's not going to be stopping until a Bash comes in for Burning, but the Epicenter's there. Yule Scepter actually stops that channel, and Nando's actually getting beaten apart by Burning. He man fights it up and forces the spend away somehow. They're trying to catch these extra heroes like Bobaka, who is going to be nailed by the Storm Hammer, but after the roll in. So they've only taken the Darks here and the Disruptor when they are hoping to be able to kill at least one more hero. God, that looked like such a good timing for Execration. They had great positioning on the high ground, and Burning just completely stopped Nando from doing anything. They got their BKBs at the same time. So as soon as he goes in, Burning pops his own BKB, just starts hitting away, gets two bashes, stops Nando from doing anything during his BKB duration, and just casually walks it off. That is so unfortunate. The like, amount of damage he did. Did Nando pop Warcry in that fight? I think he had the medallion used on him by Raging okay. Potato. I, I think he probably Warcried when he jumped in originally, but I think it probably wore off during Burning's onslaught of right clicks. Yeah, because I was very surprised at how much damage he was taking because a Mask of Madness may decrease your armor, but Warcry more than makes up for it. Right. So I was very surprised when it's the Sven forced away from the troll at this point in the game. Well, maybe next time Execration can get the the jump into a, a different hero that's a little bit easier to take down than XXS. Yeah. Like Guardian Grease Darkseer is not what I would call an easy target. Okay, self heal. Looks like he's trying to slow down Nando now. He knows there's no way he's going to be able to get this kill by himself, but if he can stall Nando enough for Bernie to get here, he might be able to get him. He actually throws down the ultimate just at a hope at being able to stop the blink, but... The BKB protecting against that magic damage does allow Nando to get to the trees. Honestly, making him pop a BKB is still way worth it. Yeah. Like, I will come in and magnetize to making that Sven pop BKB every day of the week. Because the later the game goes, Sven without a 10 second BKB against this many disables and this much magical damage, ugh, that is not a late game that I want to play. It's not going to be very happy at all. Troll is even going to be able to pick up a Diffusal Blade pretty soon here. That'll help cut the uh, Warcry tankiness down for the Sven, especially if that BKB is out. We're going to have a four-man smoke up while Q, the old Disruptor, will push out mid. OP's actually going to show himself and help push mid in even faster. They look to Roshan, but Ward's already sitting there, so they're going to have to actually find a pick here with the three of them. Double Ion Shell's up. So they could absolutely do it, but this part's going to be a little bit difficult. They've got to go for Nando. Nando does not have the BKP, but the Global Silence is there. They need the Bash, though. They got the Vacuum and a Bash going in. Nando's just not going to make it out of here. He is dead, 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 and IG starts setting up for Roche. I don't think there's really anything that Execration can do about it. I mean, they could maybe send Raging Potato in for like this kind of suicide poison of a mission and hope that it deters them, but that's under the assumption that you're hitting a lot of heroes. He might just die if he gets Thunderstruck here. Yeah, he, he might just get like, Static Storm. Might not be able to get anything off here as they start approaching him. There goes that Static Storm and the ultimate used by Troll. But there's a False Promise from RR, protecting against all the magic damage and full-on healing him up, especially with that Shrine. So they do manage to scare away from Roshan, but a constant buyback onto Nando. Nando just jumped straight into the pit with God Strength, but it's not like Roshan was actually that low. It's not like this is going to be a quick kill. And IG will have their opportunity for rebuttal here, especially with Darkseer coming in. He's got his vacuum into the wall. No, nope, he just threw down a three-hand vacuum. No wall required just yet. They're still trying to finish up Roshan, though. Wolfgang cleans on right on through the pit to the other side. Goes straight for James. Burning's coming in as well, but the force half up to the high ground. James says he has it, but Nando is able to snatch up the Aegis. They might have been able to get the kill on a Roshan, but it's the extra life that's more important for Execration. So now they look for the extra kills. Bobaka somehow managed to roll himself onto the cliff, but he'll be okay. Undetected by Execration. We'll back away. Pretty happy with just being able to get the Aegis, especially after what looked kind of a questionable buyback. He got both, man. He got the cheese, too. Oh, he did? Yeah. Nice. IG got I the kill on Roshan. Like... Yeah, IG got the kill on Rosh, but Nando walks out of the pit with the spoils. Very fortunate for Execration. Otherwise, that buyback would have been a disaster. That, that could have been, like, enough momentum for IG to just straight up go end the game. Like, that's how big of a deal that would have been for him to commit like that. Because who knows, if they die during the team fight as well, and it's a dieback on the spin, Nando doesn't really have a way. Oh, two-man bro strike. That's going to help save James. Four staffs a little bit farther. Throws out some spells, but I think he knew there's no escape from OP's Ember Spirit. 
Yeah, this is rough. Rough game for the silencer. I think they had something different in mind for how much he was going to be able to accomplish against, like, the Ember, for example. Yeah. But in this type of game, once the Ember gets to this point, he's going to have Lincolns and Yule soon. You just can't really do much to him unless you have, like, a Hex. And even then, you need, like, to break the Lincolns and then Hex him. A scan, but i forgotten. Execration to get the TP out on Nando. So maybe, very soon, they can go for a push of their own. Raging Potato's actually going to run into Burning. Oh no, that's not the bounty rune you wanted! Raging Potato gets trapped in Jeez. by Burning and whopped. Good lord. I guess my question is, does he even really need the Fusel? You could probably just buy something like MKB, right? And just like, crush him through armor anyway? Yeah, I mean, I I really like Diffuse Blade against the the Warcry. I think it just lets oh, yeah, you finish it's, heroes so fast. It's definitely great, but I think at the same time he's got the movement speed uh, talent as well. He's gonna yeah. finish up the Diffusal, but I think when you have S and Y with movement speed, with Mask of Madness and MKB, it doesn't matter how much armor you have, you just die. Yeah, because MKB mini bashes obviously are magic damage anyway. But right. yeah, Diffusal good for obvious reasons. Uh, let's see. Anything else of importance coming out on IG soon? I mean, they're all really farmed at this point because they've been they've been doing very well inside of the the fights most of the time, and it doesn't look like Execration are going to be able to really utilize this Aegis on Nando. It's really big to take it away from IG, but at the same time, you need to also be able to deal some kind of damage, make them scared, pressure in some some meaningful way, and we haven't really seen that yet. Taking a look at the net worth, we've got almost an 8k gold lead for IG. Again, experience and gold, kind of neck and neck there. We've got a lot of farms spread around to these heroes as well. Uh, it's like a Christmas tree looking at the net worth. Yeah, red, red and, and green. green. The big leader obviously being Burning. He's up by 2,000 gold ahead of the Sven. And then the Ember Spirit, 3,800 ahead of a silencer. Yeah, he's ahead of net worth of a Sven. Like, any hero with built-in cleave typically wants to be at the top of the net worth chart. Yeah. And when you're not, kind of feels bad. Certainly does, especially since Troll. I always refer to him as like the pen ultimate late game hero, just because maybe Spectre's a little bit better for the five man aspect, but nobody really beats Troll late game in the 1v1, right? Yeah, you just, you can't move. Like, you get enough attack speed and you're just dead because you can't control your character. <laughs> Believe it or not, Cat, when you can't do anything, it's pretty hard to win. Well, I guess that's where winning by existing mm. is the play, right? So we yeah. see Venomancer does. What does Venomancer do for us now, though, at 30 minutes plus? He's got a Solar Crust. I mean, it doesn't sound like a huge deal, but honestly, with as fast as burning hits, if you can Solar Crest your Sven and he gets the Warcry off during BKB, then he's probably not going to die to the right clicks. Because he'll have so much armor, he'll have evasion on top of it. He's even going for the Assault Cure S. And they'll have Guardian Greaves pretty soon on the Venomancer as well, which will be an additional sor uh, source of armor. Yeah. Lower HP. Sven's just always that hero where no matter how far behind you feel, one good god strength into a couple of autos. It's just a great equalizer, you know. Rage of Potato. Chase down in the trees. No shenanigans here, Rage of Potato. You will die. Gets off the Poison Nova, but Execration are far too far away. To actually take advantage of that. I like how IG are feeling so confident that XXS didn't even go for a pipe. He just bought a four staff. Yeah. Just kite the spin around. I'll be good. I'll be gravy, baby. 7 to 16, 32 minutes in. Bulbuck up, pops out right next to James. Gets the Yule Scepter, though, before James could react. The Storm Hammer will still catch him. And, uh, well, unless Burning can save him with a bash, unable to do so. The man fight begins, and Burning is tearing that ass up. Burning takes down Nando. Gonna go next for James. Gets the Diffuser Blade slow down. A little bit of Hurricane back action, but it won't make a damn difference, James. You're dead, and Execration of Lost 3 just to kill. A Earth Spirit, or two rather. That was a very unfortunate situation there for Execration. Like <laughs> losing Raging Potato on one side of the map. So obviously your other two heroes feel, you know, a little bit safer. Okay, they just killed this guy with like four heroes bottom. What could possibly go? Oh, okay, we're dead anyway. <laughs>
What does the silencer do to become a Corrigan? Cause Dude, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't like know. He doesn't really do anything. It seemed like really good in the lane. And then the longer the game goes, he just he needs someone to hold people still for an extended period of time. And he also needs a lot of protection during the fights. Because he's not naturally mobile, right? He's just kinda like he's a worse sniper. That's how I would describe Silencer in this game. But he can't stay as far away from the team fights as a sniper can. And his big game changer, which is Global Silence, we haven't really seen used successfully. You yeah. know, there was that one fight at bottom lane where he used it after the epicenter got canceled. Okay, and there's an Oracle dead. Yeah, RR was just a little bit too far up. Got the, he got the Static Storm treatment and Magnetize as well. Loki about to get the full magic damage has the Maelstrom up. Yeah, this is getting a little bit out of hand. Yeah, a butterfly burning is going to make things real difficult for Mando. As if it wasn't already difficult enough. <laughs> but this is another thing, too, about the, the Sven builds nowadays, is that you don't naturally make MKB that often. Because you fill your inventory with this other stuff. You have your Mask of Madness, your Blank Dagger, all these mid-range cost items. And then you have to start replacing stuff. And because you replace one of the earlier items that you buy normally, like a Mask of Madness or whatever, you lose a ton of attack speed. So even though you're getting True Strike, you're sacrificing a ton of, I guess, theoretical DPS by losing that amount of attack speed. And it just feels really awkward to transition out of it. The Assault Kiras is finished. So that is a very big boost in both offense and defense for him against the Troll. Don't think it's still enough for him to actually stand toe to toe, especially with burning, picking up that butterfly. But, uh, no one toe to toes that that hero with these items. Like, you need like a chronosphere or something to to kill him. Like something that locks him down for an extended period. So they gotta find a way to just be able to kite him around, but that only happens if they get the initiation. If they actually get that initial stun on the troll and hopefully a couple other heroes before the BKBs are used. I mean, you could just be Moogie from earlier and just never miss. That's true. Like, just <laughs> just a whole game and never missed a single attack. Didn't even need an MKB. But how do you do that, Draskal? You be, just believe in yourself really You gotta hard? be way better than we are at Dota. <laughs> like, way better. I am so skilled at Dota that I beat out the RNG system. I will, I will never be that player. Oh, they hit the scan. They're going straight in. Yeah, well, because just going to roll on out because he has the old scepter to be able to set up his team for the kill. BKB is actually going to be popped by burning just to ensure that he actually gets the kill without interruption. And uh, Nando is actually slowed down here mid lane by the Ember Spirit, but nothing's going to come of it. Those types of BKBs, I think, are worth it when you just have so little information. Like, they have one ward on the... or I guess two now, they just place another one. But the one inside the jungle doesn't really see anything when they jump to Raging Potato. Yeah. So Burning pops the BKB in anticipation of, okay, maybe they're here and they're going to help him. Yeah, if he gets Burrow struck and the rest of his team gets Global Silenced, then who knows what happens from there. Yeah. Now Execration just kind of... Wandering around, trying to get whatever kind of farm they can off the map. Nando is going to be going for the MKB choice. He kind of has to. James is going for the Scythe of Ice. And Roshan is just going to get eaten alive here by Burning and crew. Okay, cheese number two. They have the Solar Crest. <laughs> yeah, they don't, don't even need it. So that'll be the Aegis. And, uh, oh, he broke apart the Mask of Madness for Butterfly. Yep. Did not notice that. Yep, yep. That that's why the item is so OP. No recipe, can disassemble. Can go satanic butterfly late game. And the push begins from Invictus Gaming. Should be an uncontested tier two demolishing. And that's the last outer tower of execrations. So very rapidly Invictus Gaming are gonna start closing off this map. Next step is taking that tier three, backing up, killing the shrines, and then the ultimate high ground put. That's one thing I suppose you could say about IG's lineup that it's not amazing at is physically hitting the tier three. But when you are as far ahead as they are, even a bad team at hitting towers can still hit the tower. Just, just troll, can do the business, even if every one of his allies can't, because he's 5,000 ahead of this Sven. Yeah, he's freaking rich. 
That is one full item. He's also about to hit 25. Yeah. That's a great pickup. Uh, whirling, whirling axes. Do you go for that here? Yeah, I think so. I think the biggest threat you always are under is the Sven. So if you can, like, permanently... Well, not permanently, but close to permanently have that debuff on, it's it's really, really good. And if you need the extra magic resistance, you just yell at your Dark Seer to buy a pipe, since he doesn't have one yet. That is the talent he chooses. I think there's very few games where the magic resistance is better than the Whirling Axe cooldown. Because it's not even just about like the ability to man fight, it's also about you being able to push the wave faster. Because Troll is... he's not the best wave clear hero. So having the, the five second cooldown whirling axes is really, really beneficial for that. Yeah, absolutely. We're getting into uh, some quite late game scenarios here. The way this game is shaping up. IG are either going to close this out with the next push, take a lane of racks, or maybe even end the game, or Execration's going to hold and we're going to have to look towards super late game. We'll talk about that soon, because right now... Dude, Raging Potato is... Fearless. Dude, like, <laughs> he is always in the front, like, outside of the base, in the side lane, with no one on the map. Like, this guy, he, he has never known fear in his life. Yeah, they saw the troll, and they, they just kind of, like, were daring him to go on the Venomancer right here. I mean, he has a force staff, so if, if they yeah. did jump him and he was fast enough, he'd be able to force to high ground. But 1,600 health goes real fast at this stage in the game. He is not that tanky. Our spirit attempts at initiation here. Might be able to still get it. Oh, Force Death still clipped there. RR does have the Glimmer Cape, though. The Force Back, uh, Global Silence. Not going to save Lumic, but a Force Staff will. False Promise actually going to be used there on the Sand King. It's just a quick defensive measure. IG are very happy with that engagement. I don't think they use anything important. They're just going to go kill the Shrine, I think. Yeah. Just uh, Force... But, oh, no, wait. They didn't kill yeah. the Tier 3. Never mind. Why did I think the Shrine was dead? <laughs> I was like, Drasko, are you high? Wait a minute, I don't minute. think I was like, touched a tier 3 yet. Yeah, I was, for some reason, <laughs> I just like, thought we were in a different patch. <laughs> just all the tier 2. Man, what a patch that was. You remember the, um, the Baby Knight roster? They were under Cloud9 at that time. Wasn't it, uh, wasn't it old Danish Bears or something? Yeah, yeah. And they, they would just like, they would pick these lineups and they would just go 5-man, systematically. Tier 1, Tier 2, back up. Tier 1, Tier 2, back up. Tier 1, Tier 2, and then, oh, shrines are open. And then they would just kind of control the game for a while and try to end it. Yeah, shrines... Shrines were kind of... If you were losing the game, shrines were useless back then. Yeah. Because they just bore extra gold for the enemy team because you lost all your Tier 2s. Nowadays, though, got to hit that Tier 3 tower. MKB is super close. There's another... Uh, Ember Spirit has picked up a cooldown reduction. I don't know about you, Draskal. Potato. in trouble. I feel like I've seen this one before, Kev. Yeah, a couple times. It's so hard, though, because, like, Nando wants to stay out on the map, but it's, his TP's on cooldown, so he's being forced to run back to base. This is really, really bad for a Sven player to have to just walk back to base and sit there and wait. When you know that your Veno doesn't even have buyback, the ward's also going to spot him if he walks to the low ground. I'm pretty sure they're just waiting it out. Boboko was kind of sitting there, like... Bobaka really wanted to get this uh, he's just delaying on Nando, them. but he's just stalling up the Tier 3 abuse is happening, and Nando really can't get there to stop it, so Tier 3 down. They've successfully stalled him for like 15 seconds, and Burning gets a Tier 3 and a decent amount of damage onto Melee Rax here. Now OP will try and create more space for him, diving forward with the Shivas, slowing down some of these heroes, and just like that, the Melee Rax is gone, and the Execration have yet to find their opening for an initiation to actually take a fight. IG are just kind of whomping on. Well, they're just building such a huge lead that engaging without your Venom feels really difficult right now. Yeah. Especially with the MKB still not there for Nando. It's gonna have it now, though, so they have a chance. A chance. A small one, but it is a chance to be able to kill a troll. If he can get the jump and there's a global on top of it, Obviously, the Darkseer will still be able to, to act, but you assume that the BKB is going to be there from Nando. There is a definite possibility that they can kill Burning. But if they don't, and he finishes up his Satanic, and he pops it and just heals back to full, game is hard. Game might just be over. Well, they do have a Hex as well. 
This could be the blink stun into Hex, into global with the Sven killing. Like, that's the thing, right? Once you have Hex out on the field and the MKB's done on a hero like Sven who has the potential for such high damage, you can still kill the troll. It's just, you know, it's really hard. Because he's got six slots. Like, he's he's full. All he needs right now is bots and a moonshard. Anything is possible. Oh, they're even giving him the cheese. But so IG, look at OP. Every single time, he's just diving forward, trying to stop blinks, trying to stop any form of initiation. They're going to go into burning now with a burrow strike and actually aggressively force to have him in. They're going to be able to get the side device, and Nando's right there, but he managed to get the cheese off. Now he has the opportunity to pop a satanic, but decides against fighting. IG will back away. God, that was so close. If he didn't have cheese, he was dead. That was such a great play from uh, from James, the aggressive force staff, or, or something. Is that James? No, that wasn't, because he has a Hurricane Pike. Who force staff? Mm. Uh, looks like it's Sand King, I think. Oh, Sand yeah, King or the be. Venno, or one of the two forced him in. But yeah, that's kind of what I was saying. Like, the, the Hex into Blink BKB Sven is how they kill him. But it's... Well, they get the Scythe on OP here. Another aggressive force staff putting OP in a dangerous oh. position. Kill the back in with a combination of the Earth Spirit. And here comes Burning. Gets the Yule Scepter onto him, though. That'll help delay things quite a bit. But James is still pulled back into his doom, and they don't have buyback, so that he's going to be in for execution. Well, the they, epic hole. They came real close. Like, if they kill Burning there, they probably back off. They buy themselves a little bit more time. Sure, it, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to win, but it would have given them some breathing room. Yeah. That cheese trade ended up working out huge. Burning didn't even have boots in his inventory when they were doing that original push, but congratulations to IG. They tie up the series 1-1. Still big ups to Execration for being able to take that first game. It went from looks like IG's gonna win to oh god what's happening to execration win the game in about five minutes yep so if you didn't see that one highly recommended if you're an execration fan this time around though IG proved to be the the superior squad execration you know that's the third game that they've won in their series where they they won the first game and then lost the second game. it seems like though the only time they win is that first game in a series I mean hey as long as you're not bottom of the group that's all that matters for now I, I mean you got to be happy with what you can get so I think that Execration today, they took games off of some really powerful teams. And if nothing else, that has to be some kind of confidence booster. Because when you get to that main stage, you got to have confidence in your play style. So our message to Execration, survive. 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 Be Venomancer. <laughs> Exist. <laughs> Exist. All right, guys, that is it for Stream 3. Jask and I are going to be wishing you good night. I'm sure there are still some other games going on though be sure to check out all of the ti group stage because it is ramping up we still got two more days we'll see you guys tomorrow